throughout university, like I was working as a speaker. So I was doing like motivational speaking and um, talking about health and well-being, talking about meditation and the psychology of change. So I was traveling loads and going on different courses about helping people discover their purpose and all these sort of wow. crazy things. And mm. so I kept kept my foot in the door with that. And then uh, Drew, like, well, my dad and a few of the colleagues that are with Drew that you now know very well, like Shona and Annie, mm-hmm. they all um, were doing more and more training and exploration in Ayurveda. They were going to India, learning the practices over there. Mm. And I think um, it pulled me because I've always loved um, fitness and health and nutrition. I've always been very into that. And what I really loved was it was a way of understanding health that was very intuitive. And Mm. I just started seeing the change in those people that were practicing it. And I was like, you know, it must be, it must be, it must be something because I see the, yeah, of course, because then you have the actual, well, there you go. There's your, there's your evidence. Yeah, exactly. Evidence-based research rather is doing there. And that's, that's the thing. We have all of these, you know, restrictions around, choosing things based on the research but actually sometimes our own experience can be the most important thing for us as we were talking about in our session yeah um, you have to know yourself and give yourself that time to understand what's right for you yeah and I always say this with anything like even with say yoga and Ayurveda it might not necessarily be the right fit for everybody like some mm. people are really drawn to traditional Chinese medicine um, some people, you know, are experimenting with re- other really beautiful sort of vegan interpretations, vegetarian, pescatarian. Yeah. And, you know, with meditation, there's not one right way to do it and one wrong way. Mm. There's just a way that you feel resonates with you and that brings out the best. So for me, Ayurveda was my thing. I found yeah. that. Oh, I like this. This makes sense to me. And it brings everything together, the elements that you also had inside of you, you know, like you had your you had your yoga already from such a young age, you already had, and then you have the pharmacy, you know, the pharmacist in you as well that also yeah. so it makes a lot of like it makes in a way like so much sense that you are balancing it all out within yeah. the different elements within you because for people who don't know like ayurveda is a very old science also from india right that we uh that we know that we've come to know also here um and it's very much about diet and exercise i think right and that uh, that that we can be healing ourselves totally oh but it'd be helpful if i gave like a quick brief overview for anyone who doesn't know Mm -hmm. what ayurveda is so it's quite difficult. Well, no, it's not difficult to sum up. But in a nutshell, um, Ayurveda is um, it's an art form. I always see it as because mm. it's something that is has a lot of nuances, a lot of little, very beautiful things that can be adjusted and learnt from. Mm. It, it is a basis of living. So mm. it's not just a way to eat, but it's a way that you can upgrade how you sleep upgrade how you exercise upgrade how you spend your downtime upgrade how you work so I always see it as rather than having to completely throw out your old life and start a new one it's like a filter that you can add to everything you're doing that makes it the optimal for you Mm -hmm. and the way that it does this is through a basic understanding of the fact that we're all made of a constitution of different elements And what we learn in our diploma courses and within the foundation courses in Drew is that you have the three core sort of similar to what you'd have like as personality types in the West. So you've got your kapha, which are your very grounded earth, water. And they tend to be people that are a little bit heavier, a little bit stockier, but very consistent, very, Mm -hmm. yeah, very grounded and quite reliable. Um, So that's your kapha people. And uh, then you have your vata people, which is your the opposite, really. It's they're very light. They're with air and space. Mm. So those are your very creative. They tend to be very slender, very slim. Um, they always like to be moving around. If you listen to them, you'll see they jump from one topic to another topic to another topic. But they are incredibly creative because of this, because of this spaciousness. Mm. And then finally, you have your pitters, which is the element of fire dominantly with a little dash of water. And these are often the people in very sort of high powered, highly driven careers because they're incredibly focused. They're very ambitious. They can be a little bit prone to things like burnout and stress and ulcers and all of these sort of things. But actually they have a huge amount of capacity to push forward a project, 
to, to drive things. Um, and so within those, those sort of three types, each and every one of us has a different sort of percentage of each of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we have them all, right? And there's exactly. usually one dominant, sometimes two, sometimes yeah. three, three dosic, but yeah, you know, exactly. because yeah, because that's a really good and and I think that that's a very don't you feel that for you also as a pharmacist? Like I feel like what I love about Ayurveda so much is this how it is individual, like how it is very much about the individual, like your headache is not the same as my headache. And so what you need to do is different to what I need to do. And that I think is a little bit opposite to, oh, you have a headache, just take, I don't know, whatever, paracetamol or whatever, you know, it's very different, a different approach, isn't it? Definitely. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things about Ayurveda Mm -hmm. is understanding that there's no right and wrong. And yeah, it's sort of like a self-exploration and a self-understanding. And what what I try to do anyway, and I know the, the tutors and the coaches that I work with try to do, is help people create their own toolkit for not just survival, but for really thriving in the world. Yeah. And this goes from everything from therapies to specific yoga practice, specific breathing. Specific- and I think you do an amazing uh, job. If anything, I also really want this this uh, this interview to be a, a promo for Radha. <laughs> Join the Rada train. See, it's amazing. <laughs> um, and uh, be- because for, for me, Rada, like when you say, um, like, for example, with the, you know, with the, the constitution or the kind of stuff, and you've been, I think you've been in Ayurveda now for a few years. Have you seen your own uh, constitution change? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I've noticed a huge difference. Um, I think probably one of the, well, one of the biggest changes was changing my environment. And that's, again, a very Ayurvedic principle. Your environment hugely influences yeah. the constitution. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, I moved from living in the middle of a city. I was living like in Manchester city centre in a high rise apartment. <laughs> yeah. No trees, never saw the tree. Yeah. And um, now moving back to like a mountainside farm with my family and being surrounded by trees and plants and nature and loads of sheep. Um, yeah. Oh, and that actually has, for me, highlighted one of the doshas, which is what the names for these different sort of labels, um, the dosha of sort of kapha, so my grounding. And yeah. for me, that was something that I really lacked um, because I was someone, I am naturally someone who's quite high with pitta, the fire element, yeah, um, with a little bit of vata as well, as you can probably tell from the pace of my talking. Um, <laughs> but I was so driven to a point where I was just moving too quickly Mm -hmm. and that's when I started to feel that feeling of just never switching off I Mm -hmm. never felt like I was in one place even when I stood still I was moving yeah it was like my mind was so so lost in a future and lost in the past and planning everything and designing and you know having to make sure everything was perfect Mm -hmm. that I forgot where I was like I didn't I didn't think I noticed seasons properly up until the last few years. Like, I was like, oh yeah. my God, autumn. I've never seen it before because I was already planning <laughs> winter. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, just skip Let's skip autumn. We're already like thinking about winter. Let's skip uh, spring. We're already thinking about summer. Exactly. Yeah, it's very, yeah. yeah so for yeah. me, coming to the mountains, probably one of the biggest changes was um, my environment. It really helped yeah. me. Around. Yeah. And again, being at home with my family, that was a very grounding absolutely exercise of course yeah yeah Yeah. so yeah I found I found my roots and that was I'm so happy to hear huge change my family my relationship and my really really amazing relationship with nature and also a new relationship with myself that I never really I never really tapped into as much as I have and you just didn't take the time for it either you didn't make that important because you were just always on the run in a sense like always moving and uh because I think that that's something that lots of people um, kind of, I think, have have like not the wrong understanding, but like find it. They really think that, oh, your constitution is that's it, you know, for life. That's who you yeah. are, you know, kind of thing where actually the whole practice for us in Ayurveda is very much like finding that balance and, and mm. changing that the, ch- the ch- changes will always be there. Like it keeps, yeah. I mean, even though like I have always been pita and I think there will always be a very strong element of pita in me. I was even surprised because in the foundation course, I think I did it and I was like, whoa, I have made way more kapha than I used to have, you know? And it was really interesting for me to sort of like, and, and I know that because I, you know, I, I stood still, like there was a lot more time for grounding. I do my, you know, my standing postures all the time. And, 
so it made sense, you know, it makes sense when you start looking at it. So I think um, it's really, I'm just so lovely to hear also your journey and how, you know, how you, you know, your elements changed, you know, your constitution yeah. changed. And yeah, yeah. It's really, yeah, it's a really important thing for everyone to recognize that yeah. just because you think you are something doesn't mean it doesn't mean it's you actually <laughs> yeah, exactly and that you will be that for for life anyway i mean i can i'd love to have you back for for another um uh session because we're we, I, i'm close to wrapping this up but um i mean you know i know I, I know you now i know where to find you so hopefully maybe we can maybe we can do a session live in your mountain house in december I mean, I would be totally up for that and ask you more Ayurveda questions. But what I loved, um, what you asked Janie at the end, and I will put this interview in the show notes because I think it's extremely um, inspiring and you you also shown to be a very um, good host, um, is, is like if you could give us one advice, you know, like and specifically on the sort of maybe Ayurvedic train, uh, what would it be? So my one piece of advice would be, if there's anything that you change, it's making sure you have a morning routine, mm. a morning practice, a morning ritual that sets you up for the day. Yeah. Because I think we've all experienced it, you know, when you have like a really rushed start to the day mm. you miss the alarm, and everything just falls off track. Yeah. So I encourage everyone to inc- dig a little deeper into Ayurveda to adjust your morning routine according to your constitution because it's really beautiful and quite simple to do but if there's one thing that you do is create even if you have a busy life and family and kids carve out 15 minutes even if you get up 15 minutes earlier than you normally do to just either do a little meditation to go for a 10 minute walk out in the local park without your phone ideally Mm -hmm. and just have a moment to set how you want your day to go and to maybe either visualize if that works for you, how you want things to go or to set an intention to have an affirmation, maybe to light a flame. And, you know, if you follow any faith, you can do either a prayer or a mantra, whatever works for you or to do 10 minutes of stretching. doesn't have to be everything every day, just Mm -hmm. something. (laughs) For the pitas out there, really, you don't have to do it all at once. <laughs> All you can do is running off to write your list. Come back. Um, yes, trying to carve out a little bit of time in the morning, whatever is sustainable for you. Yeah. To decide how you want your life to be, because otherwise you'll look back in 10, 15 years and you've been so busy you forgot to actually to notice live. what was happening. Exactly. And yeah. it's that lovely saying of if you don't decide on your dream you'll spend your life working on someone else's dream which isn't absolutely always yeah. necessarily a bad thing but actually we all need to be aware yeah, own it and own it you know like own your life yeah and maybe yeah. your dream is helping someone else build their dream but do that with a conscious decision mm. Mm. to just take a little bit of time because in that time that's the magic time first thing in the morning where yeah. you can find creativity to decide is my life on track how am I doing what do I need but it's one thing you change yeah. Just create and protect that time because that's your life and it will change the other 20. Yeah, and I think it's really good advice also, about. like even if you have to get up just 10 minutes earlier, like I know it's hard. I know it's hard in this time of the year, but you know, you are, I definitely, my life changed with, uh, yeah, my, my morning, my morning rituals. I definitely think it's an amazing thing. And, you know, if people, because I, I, do you like work at the moment, you're still combining being a pharmacist and a coach then like you yes. just, you know, you're doing both. I am. I'm doing pharmacist coach and I'm also doing another university degree at the same time. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. What, what is the degree that you're doing? At the so it's just more, more sort of specializing in clinical pharmacy um, oh. and to sort of more of the nitty gritty of the, the things that are hospital based. So Wow. Yes, it's all very exciting though. I'm really That's amazing. It. That's so you also are a very busy bee. I am. And I'm having to practice, practice what I preach here and really try and make sure <laughs> that I protect that time that yeah. no one else can have. And it doesn't even need to be filled or planned with anything. It's just a little bit of space. And that is yeah. there is magic in that totally. Absolutely. The not to-do list, as you call it for me, right? <laughs> Sweet brother, I uh, I bl- bless you so much. I mean, thank you so much for taking the time um, to to have this chat and uh, talk a little bit about you know our our passion also for Ayurveda, but definitely also I loved 
you know, asking you, I really was like, I want to know more about this, you know, how your mind works in your heart when you are in such different worlds, but you are bringing